So whether you're recording an audio podcast or whether you're recording a video project, the quality of the audio really matters. Basically, if the audio sucks, then the content is going to suck. Even for video, even if the video looks really good, if it doesn't sound good, that's not going to be a very good experience for the viewer. And obviously for a podcast, if the audio doesn't sound very good, that's not a very good listening experience. So in this video, I want to talk about how to get really, really good audio without having to spend a ton of money or have a professional studio or anything like that. It really comes down to which kind of microphone you're using and just as important, how you're using it. All right, so let's get into it. Now, the first thing to know about microphones is that you do not need to spend a lot of money to get a good microphone. If you Google best microphones, you might find some in the $300 range, the $500 range. Of course, you can go up from there. You can get really good mics at those prices, but you don't have to spend that much money. There are plenty of good microphones for around $100, even less, especially for uh, just recording spoken audio, are going to do just fine. Now, among those mics, though, there are basically two different kinds. There are condenser microphones, and then there are dynamic microphones. Condenser microphones are built to pick up sound from all around. They're built very sensitively. So if you have air conditioning going or there's noise from outside, you're near the street, you hear cars and that kind of thing. If you're not careful, a condenser, micro a condenser microphone can pick up all that stuff and then you'll have to edit it out or it can even ruin your recording. Dynamic microphones, by contrast, are built to pick up sound only that's right in front of the microphone. And so those are typically better, especially if you're not recording in a soundproof space like a professional studio. I recommend getting a dynamic microphone uh, because it's easier that way to not end up recording a lot of ambient sort of room noise. It'll only pick up what's right in front of it, namely your voice loud and clear. Now, if you are using a condenser microphone, however, and I happen to be using a condenser microphone right now to record this video, um, there are a couple things that you can do to minimize the noise that it's going to pick up. So here I'm holding another version of a condenser microphone, and you'll see that there are a couple different buttons on the front of it there. One is the mute button, right? That's self-explanatory. And down here is the volume button, and that controls how loud or soft the sound is in your headphones when you're listening to yourself or a guest talk. If you turn the mic over, you'll find these two other knobs here. And these knobs are really important in helping you get really good sound from a condenser microphone. So this knob down here, as you'll see, this is the gain knob. And that controls the microphone sensitivity. In other words, how much of the sound it's going to pick up whether that sound is right in front of it or anywhere in the room. And ideally for a condenser microphone, again, because they're built to be very sensitive, you want to turn the gain down as low as possible while still allowing the mic to pick up sound. And then when you're recording, you want to get right up close on the mic, about a fist's length away. So turn the gain down and get kind of close up to the mic so that, so that your voice is front and center. Now, this other knob here, as you can see, it has these little symbols on it. And those allow you to set the microphone to record in different ways. So, as you can see here, this symbol means that it's recording in stereo. So, from the left and the right channels. The next one, the circle, that means it's recording omnidirectionally, that it's recording from all around, kind of 360 degrees. The next one is called, it kind of looks like a little heart shape that might be a little bit hard to see. That's called cardoid, and that means it's picking up sound only whatever's right in front of the microphone. And then lastly, over here, this kind of little figure eight symbol, that means a bi-directional recording, recording from the front and the back. Now, it depends what kind of recording you're doing. So if you're recording in-house with a guest who's sitting across the table from you and you only have one microphone, it's useful to set it to this figure eight setting here, the bi-directional, so that it's going to be picking up your voice and it's going to be picking up the guest's voice coming in from this part of the microphone, 
your voice going into this part of the microphone. But generally speaking, if you're recording a video like I am now, or if you're doing remote recording, you want this to be set to that cardioid setting that looks like a little heart because you want the microphone to pick up only what's coming in right at the front. And remember, if you position yourself only about a fist length away and you turn down the gain, then you're kind of mimicking what a dynamic mic will do, essentially. You're setting the microphone to only pick up what's right in front of it, and you're going to get really good, clear audio that way. Now, another useful thing that you can do is use what's called a windscreen. You can see on this microphone, I have uh, a ball here, and this just, just goes right on top of the microphone. Uh, you can get other kinds of windscreens that attach to the base of the microphone and then come up in front of it. And the reason that windscreens are really useful is that they help cut down on what are known as plosives. So when you say words with P's in them and B's in them, if you don't have windscreen and you're a little too close to the mic or the gain is up too high, you can get audible popping sounds in the audio and those can be really hard to get rid of in post-production. It's possible to get rid of them, but it's better just to set it up so that you don't have plosives in the first place. Now, another way to avoid plosives is to not speak directly into the microphone. So I have the mic like this. It's right in front of my mouth. You don't want to be speaking directly into the mic like that. Instead, you want the mic to be at least a little bit off to the side. And that's so when the wind is coming out of your mouth and you're kind of blasting air out of your mouth, it's not going directly into the microphone. And even if you have a windscreen to take care of plosives, you can still get that kind of breathy, windy noise that you really don't want. The best way to do that is to place the microphone a little off center so that it's still close enough, it's still picking you up loud and clear, but you're not sort of breathing and spewing air right into the microphone. Now, Finally, no matter what mic you're using or how you're using it, the other thing that's going to affect how your audio sounds is where you're recording. Now, most people, including me, even though I'm a professional podcast producer, I don't have a professional studio set up at home. I don't have baffling on the walls. The room is not professionally soundproofed. But there are things that you can do to make any room that you're recording in at least a little more soundproof. If there's carpeting, that's good because it'll help absorb the sound. If you don't have carpeting, if you have hardwood floors, putting a rug in the room can really help. The smaller the room is, the better. The more compact it is, the better. The larger the room, the more space there is for the sound to bounce all around and sound echoey. But the more compact the room is, the less space there is for sound to bounce around. Now, as you can see in the background here, there are some books on a bookshelf over there. And in fact, there are more bookshelves in this room where I'm recording. And I find books uh, filled with bookshelves or other things to be really good for absorbing sound and keeping it from bouncing around. Now, of course, wherever you're recording, you want it to be relatively quiet. So if you're recording in your house, you want it to be away from areas of the house that are typically going to be pretty noisy, like maybe the kitchen or a room near a television where people might be watching and the sound can seep in. You don't want to record in a room that's nearby a busy street because you get a lot of traffic sounds. So at the end of the day, in order to get really good audio, you need to have the right kind of mic for the space that you're recording in. You need to know how to use that mic, how to control the volume and what to set it to. You need to position yourself properly in front of the mic. And you're not going to need to record in a space that's going to be as conducive as possible to getting really good audio. You don't have to spend a lot of money. You don't have to transform one of the rooms in your house into a professional recording studio, like by sticking egg carts on the wall or anything like that. In fact, that, th those don't even really work very well. If you follow these tips, then you'll get pretty good audio going in. And in another video, I'll show you ways that you can use audio editing software to make the audio sound even better in post-production. So thanks a lot for checking out this video. If you have any questions, you can contact me directly at jeremy at